Hey, it's Travis Anderson here. We're gonna do this week's video on how coronavirus is affecting our real estate market. Hey, we're gonna look at three things here today. We're gonna to talk about my current activity within within the market. We'll talk about the market as a whole. And then of course, we'll, we'll make some assumptions about where things might go depending on how uh, the data looks, okay? And then of course, I'll make some awesome, fun recommendation about a, a home tip, okay? So number one, let's talk about how our, our own business has been affected. Hey, listen, zero effect. In fact, I would say that there's been a positive effect on my own clients' lives. In other words, I've noticed that there are maybe less people going out to look at real estate, but the people that are looking are more ready to buy, and send, so then you're actually having you know, better buyers walk through the homes. We do have some data to support that to be the case, but we put three listings on the market on Friday. Now remember, the shelter in place started on Saturday, and by Sunday afternoon, all three listings were sold for at least their asking price. Some of them sold for more. We worked with a buyer over the weekend, we worked with three sellers over the weekend, we've got active buyers right now that we're showing homes to. There isn't a, a vast change in the actual overall conclusion of buying and selling real estate. So what has changed, of course, sellers were recommending again, leave the doors open, let's leave the lights on. Buyers, you know, sometimes it's like, hey, just put your hands in your pockets, let's not touch anything. If you're sick, stay home. If you have a fever, stay home. So there are things that have been affected. But as far as the actual buying and selling of real estate, there's been no effect in our team. What are some things that we are noticing? When we go to closings, I had a closing today, they asked me not to go into the room. The title closer said, hey, just sit out in the lobby. When I'm done, we'll we'll bring, bring out the the paperwork for you okay so I didn't get a chance to sit in with my clients we just sat in the lobby and waited for everybody to finish up so uh, they're putting buyers and sellers in separate rooms a lot of sellers they're asking to sign at home or come in and sign early so we're putting less people in a room together title companies are going down I walked by a title company on the way into this video and they were spraying down the door handles spraying down the tables and getting everything really clean so obviously that is a change how we're approaching working with buyers and sellers. We've done some video conferencing. I mean, one of the listings we put on the market on Friday, I've actually never met the um, misses. We just did a video conference call for that. So, you know, some of those things for sure. We're doing more video tours. All of those things are true. But let's look at some of the data, okay? I wrote some things down here. I wanted to analyze all of March so we could take a look from a week by week basis what has actually changed. So let's talk about active listings. So this is new listing data. Week one, 1300. Week two, 1390. Week three, 1600. And week four, 1550. Now, it went up and then back down just slightly. So as far as new listings that hit the market in the month of March, I would say there's a variably no change, right? Probably seasonal more than anything else. Do I expect for listings to continue to come on the market at a high level? I actually do. There's still room, like we've talked about in previous videos, to get more listings on our market. And so we have a gap, I would say, of between 50 and 60% more listings. So I hope to see that number actually increase over the next couple of weeks instead of the slight decrease that it did from three to four. But we'll see. We'll see what happens after the shelter in place. So stay tuned for the next video. Pending transactions. Get this. Week 1, 1223. Week 2, 1486. Week 3, 1585. And week 4, 1451. So again, were there less buyers in the entire MLS? Yeah. However, we're looking at one variable. And one thing that maybe isn't perfectly accurate, since it's the last week, a lot of our data doesn't get inputted until afterwards. And so in other words, we're maybe 100 homes less sold on the market in the fourth week from the third week. But that was just literally Friday and Saturday and Sunday. So some of that data might increase over the next few days as we actually input data into the MLS. And so again, variably no change in, in number of buyers buying. Here's the change in the market that I want to talk about. Week number one, 29,000 total showings. Week number two, 28,400 total showings. Week number three, big decline, about 30% less showings, 22,000. And then again, another 30% less showings, 16,700. Now, in previous videos, I've looked at just one price range. 
Here I looked at the entire market for showings. The beginning of the month we had 28,000 showings and the end of the month we had 16,000 showings. That looks to be like a, a very large change and of course it is a large change. But the data doesn't say that there's less buyers. In other words, the people that are looking at homes are actually buying the homes that they're looking at, okay? And so instead of maybe at the beginning of the month, we had we had more people looking that were maybe just browsing or looky-loos or whatever you wanna call it. Now people are sheltering in place. They're not going to look at real estate unless they're in the need to buy real estate, but if they do, they find a home and they write an offer. And so I suspect that the number of showing activity will be stagnant, if not you know, maybe less than it is even currently. And then we'll see it increase again as we see the regulations increase or loosen is maybe a better word for it. The good news is the number of homes for sale is still below what I think it should be. We've got a gap there, maybe between 50 and 60%, we could get more homes in the market. The number of buyers that are actually buying looks to be just fine. Number of showing activity, that's actually down. That can be a good thing for both buyers and sellers. In fact, I think it's a good thing to actually do the research before you're going and looking at houses. I think it's equally a good thing for sellers to have less people coming through their home. So these things are all good. Now, what's the data point that we've been talking about that I'm most worried about? And that is the job market. I'm looking at some data points here. I'm just gonna read them directly. We had a record week in Minnesota of 116,000 jobs lost, and that comes directly from the state of Minnesota, okay? We have 300,000 people who filed for unemployment in a two-week period, okay? Now again, we're looking at one variable. I do think that that number would be lower if unemployment benefits weren't expanded. In other words, more people have access to un unemployment, so then more people are taking advantage of unemployment, which I think is fine. Just understand that that number is going to be inflated by some percentage. I'm not exactly sure what it would be, but it's going to be inflated by some percentage compared to what it would normally be because it's been expanded. Now that number totals in that two week period, that number totals 5.5% of Minnesota workforce. And that comes directly from the state of Minnesota. Now listen, if we continue to see unemployment go from you know five and a half percent in a two week period, and then the next two weeks it goes to 10%, and then the next two weeks it goes to 15%. I mean, geez, these types of things would be unprecedented, right? A lot of economists are predicting that maybe 30% of people will be on un unemployment. Obviously, that's going to affect the real estate market. This video isn't saying one way or another what the future is gonna hold. My assumption is if we approach 10% real unemployment, we're going to see a change in the market. The good news is we have capacity for more listings, in other words, if we do get unemployment and people are forced to sell their homes because of foreclosure and things like that, we actually do have room for those foreclosures to come online and to come available for sale without actually affecting the price. We just don't know how much this unemployment is going to affect things. And of course there's a byproduct of, of unemployment of things like you know domestic violence, um, suicide, things like that. All of those things too will eventually affect the real estate market. And so. Hopefully unemployment, we're able to kind of curb this. My hope for everybody is that we're able to get through this situation as quickly as possible and that the market begins to recover, the economy begins to recover. I'm not sure how swiftly that recovery will, recovery will be. I'm perfectly fine with a long recovery in Minnesota. How that would affect the real estate market, a longer recovery is fine. It's just we need recovery to begin sooner than we need uh, you know, than the bottom to bottom out. In other words, if we see recovery in the next 60 days, 90 days, uh, 120 days, we're probably gonna be okay. If we don't see recovery for six months, 12 months, 18 months, obviously we're gonna have some issues. Time for a home care tip. You know, I had a conversation with one of my clients the other day and they had said that their toilet bowl had, you know, some calcium buildup around there. And of course you can buy products to take care of calcium buildup all over the place. And they said they were having a hard time, right? Like bleach wasn't taking care of it. CLR wasn't taking care of it. And here's something that I had remembered from a listing that I had owned myself that I had sold a few years ago is pumice stone. You can go to your local store like Walmart or Target and you can actually get a little stone that you can use to like clean the skin off your feet. So you find it in like the home care section and and you can use that and that will work to take off any buildup inside of a toilet 
and it won't wreck the porcelain of the toilet. So just do a YouTube video, search pumice stone on toilet, you'll see what I mean. If you've got buildup, that's a great way to get it out of there without using chemicals. Hey, if you found this video helpful, feel free to share it on your Facebook page. Feel free to tag me in the link. You know, maybe share it to a friend. I hope that these videos are helpful for you. They're definitely helpful for me to stay in touch with what's actually happening so I can provide better advice to you during these challenging times. Have a great day.